Hello everyone. In the previous video, we looked at the theory behind the cloud integration flow. Uh, now it's time to put everything into action. Okay, so we go into the design tab and go into integrations. And the first thing we need to do is uh, create a package. So you can click on the create button and provide the required fields and you can save and this will create you the package. And once you create the package, I already have the package created. Uh, so you can go inside of the package and here you can create the artifacts that you want. And in this case, we'll be creating uh, artifacts of the type integration flow. Uh, so you would uh, go to edit mode and then from the actions, uh, you would uh, select create uh, to create the iFlows. Um, in, uh, in my case, I already have it. Uh, so let's look at the step one. Uh, so if I go to step one of the iFlow, uh, you will see that all I have uh, is a timer. Uh, so uh, instead of the start event, I replace the start event with the timer and then it goes to the end. And if you look at the start timer itself, uh, it's uh, scheduled to run uh, right away. So as soon as I deploy it, uh, it's going to run this uh, iFlow and nothing happens because uh, there's nothing in this uh, iFlow. Uh, it immediately goes to end. Um, so let's go to the next step, see what we have done. Uh, so if I go to step two, uh, now in the step two, uh, I have added a content modifier. And we looked in the previous session how we can change the message uh, using the content modifier. Uh, so everything is the same, except that we have introduced the content modifier. Uh, so if I look into the content modifier here, uh, as far as the header is concerned I have not changed anything uh, in the exchange property also I have not changed anything uh, but in the message body uh, you can see that I have now uh, an XML message uh, with three products in it uh, product one uh, product two and product three uh, so I've modified the body of the message uh, in this uh, content modifier in step two. Uh, but again, nothing happens. Uh, I deploy it, it runs right away because of the timer, and then it goes to end. Um, so now let's go to step three. Uh, what have we done in step three? In step three, uh, what I want to do is I have uh, three products in this content modifier. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to go ahead and split them into three different messages. And that's what the general splitter is going to do. Uh, it's going to split this message into three different messages. And uh, if I look in the general splitter right here, I'm using an X path and I'm using a, a relative path. Uh, so I'll take a quick uh, detour to talk about X path. Uh, so X path is uh, a language that you can use to manipulate XML documents. Uh, so if I go to my um, X, uh, Visual Studio Code, so I have Visual Studio Code right here. Uh, I have a couple of extensions installed, uh, the XPath extensions installed on Visual Studio Code. And here on the left side, uh, you see that I have an XML document. And on the right side, I have some XPath expressions. Now, anytime you see this uh, single slash, uh, this is going to denote the absolute path. Uh, so you have two ways of uh, manipulating. You can use the absolute path or you can use the relative path. Uh, so in this case, I'm using an absolute path. Uh, so slash bookstore. So it starts with the, the, at the top of the node uh, and that is slash bookstore and slash book. So if I run this, I will get three sections. So there are uh, there's this book section here, there's this book and there's this book. And you can see that I have uh, three. Now I can also go slash bookstore slash book slash author and this is going to give me all the authors so i have author here author here and then multiple authors right here uh, so this is the absolute path now you can also use the relative path if you want and if i use the relative path it's going to find the author element everywhere in the document and it's going to display it now in this case it's also going to pick 
this author right here, uh, whereas if you look in this absolute path, uh, this absolute path uh, is not matching this, so it's not going to pick this, uh, whereas with the relative path, uh, you can pick uh, this as well. Uh, so there are pros and cons of using absolute path and relative path. Uh, obviously, relative path is easier to use, uh, but uh, absolute paths, uh, uh, you can specify exactly which element you want to pick. Uh, so whereas uh, with this slash author, uh, it's going to pick author everywhere in this document. Uh, in addition to picking values uh, from the XML document, uh, you can also have conditional XPath as well. Uh, so here you are saying count book greater than zero. So this is going to evaluate to true uh, because uh, this uh, absolute path, uh, we have uh, three book uh, sections right here in this XML document. And in addition, you can also pick the attributes. So anytime you see the at the rate symbol, uh, this is going to denote, denote the attributes in the XML document. Uh, so in this case, uh, the language is EN. Uh, so if I run this, it's going to pick the uh, attributes as well. So in addition to elements, you can also pick uh, attributes as well. And you can also have conditional uh, stuff on the attribute as well. So in this case, uh, it's going to pick language equals EN everywhere. And uh, also on the element itself, uh, so price greater than 35. Uh, so this is, uh, you can do all this stuff as well. So XPath uh, is something that you would use uh, quite uh, quite uh, extensively in the SAP integration suite. Um, so in this case, we are using the XPath. Uh, so in our content modifier, if you look in the content modifier, uh, we have uh, the product right here like this. And this XPath is uh, going to go ahead and split it uh, into three different messages. Okay, so now going to step four. Uh, so now we have uh, three, uh, uh, the content modifier, and now we have split it into three different messages. Um, and now in step four, I also have an additional content modifier. Uh, now what I'm do going, uh, let's see what I'm doing in this content modifier. In the message header, I'm not doing anything. Uh, in the message body as well, I'm not doing anything. Uh, whereas in the exchange property, I'm creating a new property right here uh, with the value product ID. And uh, right now the general splitter has split it into three different parts, uh, but I'm taking the product ID. So I'm using another uh, relative path right here. So I'm getting the product ID and I'm throwing it into the exchange property. So now I will have three messages and each each of the message will have uh, the product ID in its exchange property. And uh, uh, this is best practice to put temporary values in the exchange property so you can retrieve it later. Uh, the reason why we are getting the proper product ID is now we want to make a call uh, to make sure that this product is in our database. Uh, so let's uh, look at step five. Uh, so if I go to step five, uh, I'm going to make an OData call. So you can see that I have a request reply uh, uh, process right here, and I have an OData adapter right here uh, to make a call to the backend uh, to check if this uh, product ID is in our database. Uh, so if I look in this OData adapter, and uh, this OData adapter, uh, we have quite a few features uh, to this OData adapter. Uh, so it has like a query wizard, uh, so you can, uh, um, you can uh, create the URL syntax based on the query wizard. But let's look at the connection details. Uh, in the connection details, I'm not connecting directly to the SAP Gateway demo system. Uh, instead, I'm connecting to the API management, the API proxy that we created in API management. Uh, and the authentication is none because the policy that we applied automatically applies the credentials. And if I go into the processing, uh, so here is uh, where if I click on the edit, button right here. Uh, I told you that there is a query wizard, so I, you can click select and then you can go through this uh, query wizard. Uh, in this uh, example, I'm selecting this uh, product set. I'm uh, making a query to this product set. I'm just selecting only like a couple of fields right here 
and I'm also uh, passing in this uh, simple expression and I'm getting it from the uh, property because I added the product ID into the property. Uh, so I'm doing a filter right here. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to make sure that this uh, product ID comes back. Uh, if, the pro if there is no data, then I know that it is an invalid product. Uh, so let me go ahead and cancel this out. Yeah, so at this moment, I'm going to make a request reply to make sure that I get the data here. Uh, so this is uh, step five. And then uh, in step six, uh, what uh, I'm going to do is if it is an invalid data uh, or if it is an invalid product, uh, then I'm just simply going to let it, uh, uh, I'm just simply going to ignore it. And then if it is a valid product, uh, then I'm going to do some further processing. So if I look in the route, uh, you will see that again here I'm using like an uh, absolute X path right here, uh, but this is a conditional X path. Uh, so if the product, if it's uh, greater than zero, uh, then I use it for additional processing. Otherwise, I just ignore it. Uh, so let's see how this all works. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, this uh, step six in um, in trace mode and I'm going to show you how it looks like. Uh, so I go into the monitor integrations. Uh, let me go ahead and search for step six. And step six, I'm going to put it in the trace mode. Uh, and once I put it in trace mode, uh, I can run this uh, integration flow and uh, uh, we can look at the how the messages look like. Uh, so if I go into step six, and I can go ahead and deploy it and the timer is going to kick right away and it's uh, going to run this uh, uh, this iFlow so far that we have uh, created. And now I can look into how it looks like. So I go into monitor integrations and uh, into all artifacts that ran. Uh, step six just completed right here. Uh, let me look at the trace message right here. And you can see in the end event uh, right here. Uh, so if I look in the message content right here, and if I go into the payload, uh, you can see that this one has a product. Uh, so which means uh, uh, this is a valid product that I want to use. Um, and if I go into my uh, exchange properties as well, uh, in the product ID is uh, as part of the uh, exchange property as well. So, uh, and you can see that there are three end statements. Uh, so if I go to the other end statement, if I go into the payload, uh, this one has the uh, message, the body, uh, this one has the data for the very first product. And then if I go into the exchange properties, uh, you can see the product ID of the very first product. Uh, so we were able to split it into three different uh, pr uh, messages. And uh, we were also able to see uh, if the uh, product is a valid uh, product in our database or not. Uh, so in the next session, uh, we will continue with this uh, integration flow.